Good morning. Thank you. Uh, as, uh, as Ed told you, I'm Mike Olson. I am Cloudera's CEO. I want to give you a very brief overview of some of the interesting big data problems we see being attacked in the industry today. Let's begin by talking about drugs. What you see on the screen here, this graphic, is a single nucleotide polymorphism, a SNP. It is a single base pair variation in a genomic sequences. These are very important for a bunch of reasons. Many of them totally benign, no effect, whatever. Some of them are interesting markers. They tend to locate near genes that are implicated in the progress of disease. Sometimes the SNPs themselves are implicated in the progress of those diseases. Sometimes the SNP can either promote or inhibit the activity of therapeutic molecules, of medicines that are applied to attack those diseases. Clearly, if you're a doctor, if you're a pharmacological researcher, you'd like to figure out where these SNPs are. You'd like to learn about what they do. That's a combination of informatics and of wet lab science. One last interesting fact about SNPs. It has nothing to do with the talk, but it just fascinates me. The absence of these variations is also an important signal. There are regions on the genome where SNPs are simply not observed, no mutation, whatever. This, this is called a putatively universally conserved protein, a region of the genome where no change ever happens. Best guess, of course, is that there is something happening, that there's a genetic activity there that is so important that any variation at all is so maladaptive as to be deadly. So discovering regions where no SNPs happen can tell us a lot about the genome as well. A team of researchers at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health has developed a set of tools for exploring the genome, locating SNPs. When you sequence the genome, what happens is you produce an enormous number of relatively short reads, hundreds or thousands of base pairs. That enormous jigsaw puzzle needs to be assembled into a coherent picture and then examined, compared to figure out what's going on on it. Bowtie and crossbow are tools that Langmead and Schatz have developed to do that work. Massively parallel analysis, able to run quite inexpensively on top of Apache Hadoop. This is interesting because it allows them at low cost to explore the genome. It ought to be the case some years from now that when you go in and talk to a doctor about a malady you may be suffering, the doctor is able to create a profile of you and your SNPs, and to use that to help understand both what diseases you may have and also what molecules may be effective in treating it. Let's move on now to guns. The city of Santa Cruz, California was called out in the Time magazine in 2011 uh, for having launched one of the most innovative programs of the year. Predictive policing is a technique that Santa Cruz uses to put cops where it matters. Every day, they take the entire history of crime in the city, upload it into a database, all of the thefts, all of the robberies, all of the murders, everything that's happened in the city, and build a map that directs officers to the areas where they ought to be. Obviously, there's going to be temporal variation over seasons, crime's going to move around. Uh, there may be events, concerts or other things that, that happen that cause crime to break out. There may be periods of more or less. The police would like to be able to be in the right place at the right time. Now, this is obviously a very useful tool, just looking at the incidences of crime and where they were. But imagine combining this with remote sensing data, for example, from the shot spotter system used to locate gunshots, ingesting Twitter feeds and hearing what the populace is saying about things that are going on, policing absolutely can benefit from big data. Another example, a very important one in the way that big data is applied to crime and terrorism is understanding who and where terrorist acts are being, uh, who is plotting and, and where they are plotting terrorist acts. The search for Osama bin Laden spanned a decade. It relied on the collection and digestion of an enormous amount of various data from many, many sources. Now, I'm not claiming here anything specific about how that search was done. Much of that information is secret. I will tell you with rock solid certainty, big data played a big role in that hunt. The tools that we have developed for social network analysis apply equally well to terrorist network analysis. Who knows whom? 
What do they talk about? Where do they live? What are their relationships? If we can build graphs that allow us to tie people together in that way, we can do a much better job of identifying and preventing bad actions. The screenshot you see here, by the way, is from a tool called Synthesis. It's able to ingest an enormous amount of textual and other data and to automatically discover concepts and trends that the documents describe. I want to wind up with a three-slide story about exploring for oil. Clearly an important problem these days. Gasoline at four and a half bucks for those of you who live in California. The rest of the country saving big, big money by spending just a bit over four dollars. Oil exploration relies on remote sensing, data collection, data analysis. The ship that you see here in this picture is dragging a hydrophone, basically a great big air cannon in the water. Behind that is a long chain of hydrophones, microphones that are in the water, listening for the reflection of those shots off of the seafloor and off of subsurface structures. The goal, clearly, is to paint a picture that looks like the one you see on the slide. Where's the oil? Where's the rock? Where should we put the drill bit to maximize return. The hydrophone data, what is collected, is a whole bunch of signal. This is what it looks like after production. I'm sorry. Now you can see here, there's a good structural map of the subsurface. We can see some harder regions where sound waves bounce back better. We can see some softer regions where they're absorbed more frequently. What you can't see in this picture is any oil at all. Now, this is already enormous processing over the hydrophone data that was collected, but it's not particularly useful in this form. What you really want is a good picture of subsurface meaningful structures. Big data techniques can be applied to the signal data that's collected from the hydrophones, the subsurface structural images that you saw on the last slide, combined with modeling techniques with an understanding of earth science and geophysiology, figuring out what other structures have looked like in the past, what signal has suggested that oil was available. Now, the picture you see here, built out of just such a model, is a, a large salt dome, a, a big subsurface salt deposit. Those are interesting because they tend to be relatively impermeable. It's tough for gas, it's tough for oil to bubble through them. They tend to trap those resources. So if you can find a salt dome, you're a long way to finding interesting areas to d drill for oil. I've shown you several examples of the way that big data works in the world today. Uh, some of those, by the way, have had to do with Hadoop. Some of them haven't. If it weren't for the tyranny of the 10-minute keynote, and let me say out loud, Strata, this drives me nuts. If it weren't for the short time available, I could weave these threads into a really compelling fabric. You can imagine the intersection of drugs and guns and oil is a pretty interesting place to hang out and look for truth and badness. <laughs> the amount of data available today the way that we can exploit that data is absolutely going to transform the world. I hope, I expect, that many of you will be involved in that. You heard from Ed just a little while ago that we've merged the Hadoop World Conference, which we've been running for three years, with Strata. The first conference, the inaugural joint conference, will be in New York in October. I encourage you all to join. Our vision, our belief, is that Hadoop, as a critical piece of large-scale distributed processing infrastructure, really an innovative new platform for data capture and analysis, is hugely important. But more important still are guns, drugs, and oil. The ability to apply data to solving important social problems. And talking about the technology, talking about the platform is good, and we've been doing that for some years. But it's critical now that we begin to look at the problems confronting humanity and the variety of tools, including Hadoop, that can be applied. That is why we wanted to team with our friends at O'Reilly. That is why I'm thrilled to see you all here today. Thank you very much.